with my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of, of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. God wants to be in your life. He made us for communion with each other and fundamentally with himself. Fruitfulness of having God in your life. The fruit of peace, love, joy, gentleness, kindness. We must find God in our own souls in our own hearts. Peace be with you. Hello, my name is Father John Harris. I'm a Dominican and I live here in Ireland. For many people today, having God in one's life seems an alien concept. I have a friend and he said to me one time, to me, he said, God is an energy. And he said to me, is that enough, John? And I said, I couldn't love an energy. God is a person. And a person, not just simply one person, but we Christians believe that God is three persons in God. It's a communion of love. And into this love, we are invited in the fullness of our humanity. People talk today about spirituality as opposed to religion. Now what we mean by spirituality? It acknowledges the fact that as human beings, we are spiritual. We're not just material. We can dream dreams. We can think. We can invent. We can paint beautiful pictures. We can compose beautiful music something that goes beyond and we can dream of what his life is like beyond because god has given us a hunger for himself and this is what spirituality is it's the ability of the human person to think great things to wonder to imagine to hope now what religion does is to give an answer to some extent to what we are dreaming for, to give an answer to our expectations, to feed our hunger. So religion and spirituality are not opposed to each other, but in actual fact, they go together. So our openness to the divine, our openness to God, is answered by true religion. And so in our Christian understanding of true religion, God, the communion of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, has created us to enter into that communion of love. God loves all of you in the totality of your humanity. And so by consequence, it involves also not just how we think, but also how we act and how we react with the fullness of our bodies. God isn't just interested in us as minds, but as his human beings. And as human beings, we have bodies, we have emotions, we have desires, and all of these have to be touched by God. People often say, you know, I like the ritual of the faith, but I don't like the morality. But without morality, our faith isn't real. It's an entertainment. Jesus became man. He entered into the fullness of our humanity to save us in the sacredness of our humanity. So all of who I am needs to be touched by the Lord. Not just how I pray, not just how I think, but how I live, how I live with myself, how I live with others, how I love, how I grow in love, how I come to terms with envy and pride and fear in my life. So if we are to be saved, that means if God is to come into our lives and really bring his presence, he must save us 
as I have said already, within our own stories, not outside of them. So it's within how we react in our emotions, in our desires, in our passions, in how we react to other people. That's what the Lord comes to give us that freedom of his presence in the whole of our lives. How do you live with your husband, with your wife, with your children? How do you live with your work colleagues? How do you live with your neighbors? How do you inter interact with people of different faiths and no faith? God must be outside of none of these because these are all part of who you are. And the Lord Jesus wants to be part of every part of your life. Not that he can control it, because that would be against his gentleness and his goodness. But that you can know in the freedom of your heart, in the fullness of your life, what it means to be a human being. A human being with all the hopes and joys and desires that human beings have. The Lord touches them fully. There's a wonderful story of our blessed Lord. A leper came to him one day. Now think of what it meant to be a leper at the time of Christ. It was incurable. You were sick. You're probably going to die of this disease. Your family couldn't go near you because they were afraid they'd be caught by it. You couldn't go home. You couldn't go into your village. Anytime you came near anybody, you had to warn them to keep away, keep away. I am unclean. This leper one day heard about Jesus and he called out and he said, Jesus, if you want, you can make me well. And the gospel says, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said, of course I want to be healed. Jesus was probably the first person to touch that leper since he was diagnosed with leprosy. By that touch, Jesus was saying to that leper, you're no longer alone. I'm not afraid of you. And that's what the Lord does to all of us. No matter where we are, whatever we are struggling with in our own lives, the Lord wants to touch it with his healing love. A few years ago, I was working with people who were addicted to drugs. And these people were trying to get off of the drug. And I remember a conversation with a young girl one day. And she said to me, you know, Father, I got involved in drugs because I wanted the kick. I wanted enjoyment. I wanted to be part of the club. I wanted the buzz that the drugs could give. But look at me now, she said. What has happened? The drug has now become my everything. I'm no longer in control. I just don't want the fix anymore. I want the drug. The drug controls my life. I am no longer in charge of my life. I had a very good friend one time who was an alcoholic. And one day we were talking about his drinking habits. And he said to me, remember John, as an alcoholic, my thought is always about the next drink. No matter what else I'm doing, once I know where the next drink, I am okay. If I wasn't sure where the next drink was, I couldn't function. In both of those stories, we realize that these people aren't free. The drink controlled my friend's life. The next drink. Even while he was drinking one drink, he had to know where the next one was. The girl who was the drug addict. It was about the drug now, not about her. It wasn't even about the buzz she'd get. It was about the drug. And that's what the Lord comes to set us free from. Yes, the fact that I'm an alcoholic or a drug addict, that's not the problem. The reality is you're you. And the Lord needs to come into the fullness of your life. And whatever your difficulty is, whatever you are struggling with, that's what the Lord wants to touch. I am a priest and I've already in this series talked about being a confessor. And people come to confession and say, you know, Father, what am I to tell you? And sometimes they're shocked when I say, tell me everything. 
Because in the telling of the everything, you're being released through the mercy of God. You see, the beauty of Christ's love for us is that we don't have to hide anything from him. We can't anyway. He knows everything. He knows us intimately. But what the beauty of them, we share it with the Lord, it's already broken. Because you see, the first thing that sin does is isolates us. If people really knew what I was like, they wouldn't like me. If people really understood what I'm struggling with, they wouldn't trust me. So that's what sin does. It isolates us. It makes us alone. Nobody can help me. What the Lord does to come in his freedom and his love is to touch us, even in our sinfulness, and indeed in our sinfulness. The Lord knows me, and I can share it. And so when people come to me in confession as a priest, and they say what they have to say, it's not about me listening to what they're telling me. It's about them being set free. They're no longer now imprisoned in their brokenness or in their sinfulness. They've already broken through by saying what they have to say. And when we say it in the presence of the Lord, His love can come in then and heal us and set us free. There is nothing in your life that should ever keep you from Christ. Yes, sin does keep us, but it imprisons us. But once we bring it to the Lord, no matter what it is, when we bring it to the Lord, then we are free. And we take back our lives. And we live our lives. When the Lord is in your life, he helps us to take back our lives. And not to have our lives run by anyone or anything by our passions or our desires, but for us to be really at peace with ourselves. We may begin our journey back to God, feeling we're unworthy, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that the Lord is on your side. And with him in your side, you take back your life. You be the person you want to be, not led by your desires, not led by your weaknesses, but led by yourself. Pope John Paul used to call it self-mastery, to be yourself, to live in the integrity of your own life. That's what the Lord delights in. He delights in you being you in all other aspects of your life. You are a human being. You are God's beautiful creation. You are made to live in the love of God. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. At the end of Mass, we are told to go out and bring the Gospel into our lives and witness to the Gospel by everything that we say and do. It's so important that we are all out there bringing the joy of the gospel to everyone we know. And that's why I'm so pleased to endorse and offer my blessing to Shalom World TV for all that you are doing to bring good news into this world which is often sad and dark and in need of a message of hope. Thank you for what you're doing. May God bless your work always.